but the best thing we could do is really start taking action as soon as possible to have a really good last quarter that sets up the momentum for 2024. And um, like I said, I've been kind of thinking about a lot of these things. And I know we've got some people who have been in the business a while on this call that would agree with me is I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The market is not as good as it could be. It's, it's, it's kind of bad. Um, you know, rates are high. Greg, Greg, I'm sure you're dealing with that. Um, but there are still deals happening every single day. Um, there's still a, a lot of business to go around. And the uh, buyers and sellers that are working with agents right now are picking their agents based on trust. Um, and I'll show you kind of the evidence of that here in a second. Um, but it's true. You know, they want to work with somebody that they know, like, and trust, period. And so, um, again, those, those deals are happening every day. And then the question is, well, how do we become, you know, an agent that, that our database trusts? Well, that's exactly what we're, we're going to talk about here today. So um, I do encourage people to take notes. And if you can implement, we kind of talk about, I know a lot of uh, speakers at Build talked about this, is just implement one thing. You know, find your nugget, whatever that's going to be for you. And apply that to your your business plan, um, you know, and really really get that going. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So here's here's what I want to talk about. So um, already, I want you to think about you know what what's the type of energy that you have right now that you're bringing to a training, a group training. Um, you know where where is your uh, your mind right now, and are you bringing your most positive energy? So like if you've been kind of connecting with me over the past couple of months, I know Josh, you and I have talked about this. I've talked about it with Mark. I don't know if Mark's on today. Um, JJ, for sure, my coach. And we've been we've been into this. Um, I, I just finished a book by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza about just getting your energy right, your mindset right, because your mindset is responsible for a lot of the success or, or that you have or don't have. And 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 without going into like all like the the craziness and science of it, um, you know, basically everything is energy. And if we're bringing some sort of negative energy to our business, to our daily process, weekly process, um, if it's negative, we're going to get negative results. That's it. Um, but if you're thinking more of an abundance mindset, which is what I want to share here, um, you're on the right track. And I, I could tell you this, anybody that's got business going right now in what is more of a difficult market, I can guarantee they're more on the right side of this chart. They're more on the abundance side of things. Um, and so, you know, um, I won't go through all of this, but, you know, like this is a good example, like on the scarcity side of things, you're, you know, people might be focused on what is lacking and on the abundance side, uh, wh where we should be focused on unlimited possibilities. Okay. Left side competes to stay on top, right side collaborates to stay on top, uh, left side threatened by other successes. I've experienced this plenty of times and interacted with other agents within our own organization or agents at other companies. And um, if, if you see someone being successful, you should be rooting them on. You should be excited because you should be thinking that same opportunity they have, I have too. Um, but if you start going, man, you know, I'm just kind of jealous of that person, which by the way is natural. Like we all do that. Or, you know, like I, I, you don't like seeing that. Well, then you're telling the universe, right? God, whatever it is that you don't want that. And so that's the worst thing we could do. Is, is think negatively about other people's success. Um, so we want to be inspired by what we what we see people around us doing. Um, of course, um, you know, feeling entitled, fearful, not good. Feeling grateful um, is great. So one of the things I like to do every morning is just kind of get, you know, get grateful about the things that I have, family, house, shelter, opportunity. Um, I even put EXP in there because EXP has been really good to me. Um, uh, over here, place small and avoids risks. Um, gets out of their comfort zone, um, worrying about the things that are outside of their control versus focusing on what we can control. This is a really, really big thing um, because we can only control our own actions, right? We can't control the market. We can't control um, crappy clients that want to treat us like junk, right? Um, and so it's on, it's on us to be proactive and set expectations with our clients to try to limit surprises and set up expectations, right? So control what you can control and then the rest of it rest of it go you know um there's going to be a lot of negative people that come in and out of our lives especially in this business and you need to tune it out you just have to tune it out uh i've you know anybody that i've worked with long term will tell you like i've had it a lot of ups and downs in my career too um and so the best thing again we could do is is always focus on the positive and what we can control and we're going to get off the personal development stuff here in a second but again 
left side, self-worth based on external validation. And then right side, uh, based on connection to yourself. So this is a really, really big thing right now. And I'm actually doing, uh, I will tell you, I've got a coach in my business, JJ Garina, which is like business and personal. It's customized. It's, it's like the best thing I've ever done for myself. Um, and I have other mentors outside of that. And then I have, um, right now I have a coach for my nutrition and fitness. I haven't told anybody that, um, but their help keeping me accountable there. And then I'm even in group coaching for like, basically like leadership and, and growing a team and things like that right now. So, um, uh, what I'm getting, uh, there's a common theme that's going around and as most agents right now have been externally motivated for a long time, externally, meaning They've been riding the high of the market. 2020, 2021 has been just amazing. And it's true. Like if you've had a pulse, you're pretty much selling by doing nothing. Um, and so we've been validated by that instead of creating our own validation internally and getting our mindset right and focusing on the basics that are going to get us the business. Um, so um, now is the best time to reconnect with your, you know, your personal development, your reading, your writing, your goals, um, because that's really where all the great success comes from. Um, and if your business is down right now, you need to use that as a catalyst to start getting it growing again. Or maybe you haven't even started growing a business. You need to make this the time to grow. Because if you can grow through a difficult market and then you're, you're coming out swinging and spring, summer and next year and everything's on fire, it's going to feel amazing. You know, we're going to be agents that are capping, agents that are hitting icon, agents that are, you know, earning rev share if that's something you want to do. Um, so everything is going to be amazing. I think this is my theory, like a year from now, at least. And so we want to be prepared for that. We don't want to just kind of be getting by until the market becomes more favorable. Right. So um, abundance mindset. Um, and then we don't want to fear change, take ownership of change. We're going through change all the time with the market. So we want to embrace that as opportunity. Um, and then, of course, we don't want to be suspicious. We want to build rapport. Rapport is a, a big, big thing for me right now. Um, something that I've gotten a lot from, from my personal coaching, the best thing that we can do with our clients, um, like before we get into scripts and dialogues is just building rapport with people. Um, and, and I know Greg would agree. Like when, when you get an, an agent on the phone, Greg, I'm sure you don't go straight to like, Hey, send me your business. I know you don't because I've, I've interacted with you three or four times. It's like, Hey man, how are things going? Like, what's your, you know, how, how's your how's Austin, you know, what's your family like, you know, how's your family doing? How's, how are things? So like rapport is going to be huge for you getting that extra level of credibility to start getting the business from these, you know, these prospects, these people, right. Buyers and sellers. Um, so if you don't have rapport, you're kind of dead in the water. You really are that you just have to connect with people, especially now that's how we build trust, right? Cause it's all about building trust. So database so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen referrals or direct just right from my database okay how many of you would like to have 14 referrals in a year from your database that's that's the kind of thing we're talking about here today okay so that's the only reason i share that um because when i first started in the business and yeah. mark's on mark's here on the phone or he was um, would show you and, and, and share with you that it was not like that in the beginning, like the complete opposite. Okay. Um, so I was really, really struggling to get that business in the beginning. Um, and then we did that by systematically communicating with my sphere. Okay. So I'm going to reshare here. So um, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. So I'm sharing my numbers just to be real with you. And then before we re jump into the actual subject of this, um, I wanted to quickly talk about this. So if you don't have someone that's keeping you accountable, you are not going to be as successful as you could be, or it's going to take you longer. You're going to struggle more. You need to find a way to stay accountable with somebody. And that is on you to find that person to help you stay accountable. Okay. And then when we expand upon that, you can have someone that's a mentor to you, someone that you're checking in that, you know, can kind of weigh in on some of the things you're doing that's mentoring. And then you actually have the coach coaching. Um, which I definitely recommend, you know, when we were at build, it was like, there was like coach after coach after coach that was up there. Uh, and they were basically, first of all, they just gave all this content away, just abundance mindset, right? Give all the content away. And you know why they do that? Cause they know most people aren't going to do it anyway. That's the truth. Um, but they were giving it all away. And then of course they had a little coaching pitch at the end. 
Uh, and then I, I actually did hear people that were sort of negative, like, oh, I can't believe that they were trying to, you know, pitch coaching. Well, coaching is the best thing we can do for ourselves, period. Uh, and there were several, several really good coaches there. Obviously, we have success coaches like JJ around um, that, uh, you know, that they like JJ has personally helped change my life, my business, my outlook. And so uh, I highly recommend you get a coach and whatever you want to be better at that you're getting a coach. And then just to finish this stuff off, this topic here. If you don't have your goals written down, you're kind of floating around aimlessly. So I recommend you have at least like a month, month out goal, a six month goal, 12 month goal for your, you know, your personal life, your health, your business, your sales, um, your financial goals, all of those things, spiritual growth. Um, and you have that written down and you look at it. I like to look at it at least daily if I can. Uh, and then you also need a purpose because you know, we could all write like, Hey, I want to make like 200,000 bucks a year from now. Like that's my goal. Okay. Why? Because if you don't have a strong enough, why it's, it's not going to get you to do the things you need to do every day, every week, every month to get that goal. Right. Because like, what is it? What is it that makes you want the money or all those sales? Is it recognition? That's fine. You know, recognition is a big thing. Um, for me, it's freedom. It's always going to be freedom. And I have to always go back to that. And it's financial and time freedom to be able to do whatever I want, whenever I want with who, whoever I want. Right. Um, and I know that I can do that if I hit those goals. I've even had a taste of that every now and then it tastes really good, but I want it to be all the time. Okay. So that's, that's my purpose. I want to be free, financially free so that my family is set free so that my kids, kids are taken care of. Right. What type of peace of mind would that give you if your kids, kids you knew were taken care of which that's what i'm doing okay so that's really what gets me going not like oh it'd be really cool to make 250k okay great you know what are you going to do with that so um last thing we're going to say before we jump into this is um this is something really great i got from group coaching recently and it was um you know the worst question that we can ask like a coach or a mentor or something like that is like hey what new thing could i do or like how can i just do something that's different um, so the real question you should be asking yourself is, are you executing what you know you should already be doing right now at 100%? Because I guarantee everybody in here has some sort of plan. Like I know Jess is in coaching. Uh, I know Val is doing some sort of mentoring, things like that. And you have a plan. I know Val has a plan. You have some sort of plan for the month, for the year, for the day. So how many of us are actually implementing that specific plan, which we know like it's evidence base is going to give us business and we're doing it 100%, right? No, none of us probably. Okay. So the point is like, we don't need to go find new things and find the shiny object and change brokerages and do this. And like everybody's doing right now. We just need to focus on the actual fundamentals and basics that we already know at hundred percent. So it's actually pretty awesome to think about that. Cause it's like, wow, I actually really know what to do already. Right. So, um, this is going to be sort of a hybrid of what I've done before, um, but with some added things. And I think things that are kind of give you more of like a, uh, like a, a head start or, um, you know, kind of getting in the fasting with your business. So um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time explaining this, but the basics of selling real estate is this. You have people that know you, like you, and trust you. That's on the right. That's your database uh, or your sphere of influence. People that know you, like you, and trust you. Um, your past clients are in there. Anybody that if you saw at HEB, you'd actually say hello, because on the right, right? And then all on, on the left side is all the people you don't have a you know real good relationship with yet that are like, you know, colder leads or maybe they're warm leads or open house leads. But the whole point is you want to get as many people as you can into that database. That's that's the name of the game. So I'm actually going to show you this. Now I'm getting better at sharing, right? Check this out. Okay. So um, I'm going to show you just what my database looks like. Okay. Nothing like earth shattering, just a regular database, but I know some of us don't have it. If you don't have a database, you just start doing that today. So you need to have a list of people that know, know you, like you, and trust you. And we're going to communicate with them in a way that's not salesy, that's not commission breath. Um, if you've ever read the, the book Ninja Selling or you've never heard of Ninja Selling, I recommend you get that book as soon as possible. If you get that book and read it cover to cover and you implement just that, uh, you would be doing really, really, really well in your business because it tells you exactly how to communicate with your database, with your sphere of influence. It's called ninja selling. So this is just my database. Very simple. Name, phone, email. Um, you could 
divide this however many ways you want. You go to one training, they'll tell you one thing. You go to another training, they'll tell you another thing. I have a top 25, um, their email, their phone, their address. Um, and then I have these top VIPs. I have agent referral partners, which by the way, if you don't have those, I recommend you do that. Workplace is a great way to do that. Connect with other agents at eXp. There's 90,000 of them in 22 countries. Build out your workplace uh, profile to show that you're a working, successful realtor in San Antonio, and you will get referrals. I get two to three a year from other eXp agents. I haven't gotten one this year, which I'm not happy about, but I usually get two to three from eXp agents all over the country. So I need to do a better job on workplace. So what if your workplace showed all the stuff you're doing every day that you do in your Facebook, but you put it on a workplace and you're showing all your successes there for other agents to see, right? Because we're all eXp here. Okay. Builder reps. And then um, you know, I have a hundred past clients, which this is a big deal. Um, a lot of business is coming from this now, but uh, when I started in the business, I didn't have a huge database. Uh, you know, I had a few people I worked with, but I knew pretty quickly that they probably wouldn't work with me. They didn't really trust me. Um, I was just a young teacher, whatever. I still feel like I'm new to the business. And so uh, I built this database out by doing open houses and calling internet leads back in 2016, 2017. And that led to listings and led to more buyers and led to past clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's how we build the database. Um, and, and open houses, by the way, is a good way to start building that database if you don't have it. But if you don't have people you know, you need to be meeting as many people as you can. You want to try to build that database up to 100 people. And the rule is 25%. So if you have 100 people in your database and you are communicating with, with them the correct way, which Gary Keller says 33 touch, uh, JJ is now saying 40 something touches. Um, and it's a ninja selling, of, of course, as well. If you're communicating with them enough, the rule is 25%. So if you have 100 people in your database, you should be getting 25 referrals a year. Pretty awesome. If you're communicating with that database the correct way. And I showed you what my numbers look like. And I would say I'm not doing as good. I'm not, we just talked about it. I don't think I'm giving 100%. To my database the way that I could. And it still gave me 14 referrals last year. Pretty good. Um, and that number should be like, based on the numbers I have in my database, it should be like 40 referrals or something. So I'm slacking, right? Um, so I shared my database. Okay. Making this very simple. So like there's trainings that like the whole hour is database, right? I'm, I'm going to show you one slide. And all you need to, and I say is the bare minimum. You should do more than this. But most of us, if we're serious uh, with ourselves, we're not doing enough. So what's the bare minimum? To me, this is the bare minimum, okay? So we wanna get as many touches as we can per year. In a way, we say touches, right? Touches could be phone call, text, email, newsletter, mail, like snail mail, et cetera, event, drop off, right? Those are all different touches. Okay, so here's what I do. Uh, I break down my database and I have a letter of the week. Um, recently, I'm, I'm doing this a little bit different, but this is how I did it for the past two years. And so I go, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the A's this week, and I'm going to call them. And I'm not going to talk about real estate. I'm just going to ask them, hey, how are you doing? Let me make this really simple for you guys, because I've heard, like, when I started in the business, it was like this specific structure of a call. Um, now, Ford is great, family, occupation, recreation, dreams. It's a great way to structure your conversation. What did we talk about before? Rapport. How are you doing? How are your kids? How is everything? You know, if, if they bought a house from you, how's the house doing? Right? Um, don't we don't need to make it weird? Um, you know, make it easy for them. Like, how are they doing? They want to talk about themselves. I just met with a, a an old friend the other day. He's thinking about getting his license, and we got a conference room at Pilgrim Mortgage, and we sat down, and um, we started talking about like business type stuff. Like, do you use this mortgage company? What do you think about title and and then I just kind of said, hey, man, hold on a second. Like, how are you doing? His shoulders come down. He relaxes in the chair and he starts laughing. He's like, thank you so much for just being like that. And I'm like, what do you mean? So like people aren't used to people actually genuinely asking them how they're doing, which is crazy. Um, so rapport, right? So you can call them. Um, sometimes I will get lazy. I'll be very honest. And I'll just text. I'll, like, I'll just text this person. I'm doing the A's this week. Um, you know, Michael Anderson. Hey, man, how are things? Blah, blah, blah. I'll text. Um, you know, another thing I like to do, kind of a little secret, is I'll send a voice memo. Like, if I'm just like, like, hey, let's be honest. Like, we're not always 100% every day, right? We don't always want to talk on the phone. 
Like I know that's how I feel many, many days. So I'll send a voice memo. So like, you know how you just hold down the mic and it records your little voice memo and then you just hit send. Now you can't really make a mistake because I will just send it. But I think you're being more authentic anyway. Like sometimes I'll make a mistake and they get that one. I think it's kind of funny. So, um, and I'll just say, hey, hey, Josh, just thinking about you. Um, I, I know you finally got the sheetrock on that house. That's amazing, man. I'm excited for you. Um, that's great. Um, anyway, I uh, just was thinking about you and hope you're well. I'm talking to you soon. Bye. Like for me, I try to be short and sweet because the longer it gets, the more awkward, right? It's going to be awkward no matter what. So that's what I do um, if I don't feel like calling. So I'll call, I'll text, or I'll send that voice memo, which I think is a lot better than the text. Voice memos are great, by the way. Um, real quick, before I forget, one of the best touches you can do, this is great. And you could do this today. I would do five a day. KV Core, right? Everybody has KV Core now that's on this call, I think. So there's a listing valuation. Uh, feature so you go put their address in somebody that you know is in your database that owns a property you put their address in and it sends them an instant valuation through kv core is it the most accurate thing on earth definitely not could you do a custom cma that's way better of course you can but it's a touch right so kv core sends them this instant valuation on their home that goes to their email and it's pretty cool like it looks cool and they can see what's going on in the neighborhood and then also a, a, like a kind of an estimate of what their house is worth. Then I go to my phone and I send them a voice memo. Hey, uh, Jess, I just sent you this, this listing valuation. It's this cool software thing. I have KV Core now. It's going to give you a valuation in your property. You might want to know how much you know equity you have in the property in case you want to borrow against it. Or if you're just curious what your real estate portfolio looks like. So I wanted to send that to you. Hope that's okay. And I hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. Voice memo sent, right? So now I've crossed off. I've had that one touch today for that for that person. So um, I will tell you that every day I try to have at least, and this is part of coaching, five good conversations every day. If if I'm super busy or I'm being super negative or lazy, just telling you straight up, I'll do that. And that's that's my contact. And I got to get to other stuff, right? Okay, second thing on here to make this simple is I do a monthly newsletter. I, I won't show you right now. Um, send me a message afterwards. I'll put you on my list so you get it. I send it every two weeks. Um, last month, I missed one and I sent only one this month. Um, but if I'm sending two a month, um, and by the way, it's just information about the market, market updates. Where do we get market updates? San Antonio Border Realtors, market statistics. There's like a huge resource of stuff. Just type it or send a link or, you know, you, there's all the infographics they have on that website. I put that in my newsletter. I put one evidence of success, just sold, just listed under contract, whatever. Um, and I send it off. Has my, my personal information, has my social media links. And what do I connect all my listing photos and links to? KV Core, of course, because you want to be the source of business of real estate for your client. You don't want them using Zillow or realtor.com. So any type of social media post you have, try to put a link to your KV Core if you can, so you're getting leads. And then um, obviously when you do send out a, a newsletter, you want to send that out too. The cool thing about a, a newsletter, uh, at least with constant contact, is you can go in and see what the open rate is and it will actually show you a list of the people that opened it or clicked on it. So isn't that a good oppor uh, opportunity for you to reach out to those individual people that opened it and read it to have a conversation? Like, hey, they just read my stuff. Let me just see how they're doing. And I can even say, hey, you know what? I'll just let you know. I just saw you opened it and thought of you. So I wanted to reach out to you. Okay. So that's 24 touches right there. Easy. Two touches from the letter of the week. Um, I do uh, a monthly mail out. You don't have to do it monthly. This is a postcard. I use a, a local company called Reaching Neighbors. I guarantee there's one of these in every major city. Um, and uh, what I usually do is it has like a calendar of events. Fiesta, Dallas Cowboys calendar, Spurs calendar. It goes out every month. Um, or you could do it quarterly, or you could do it every two months or something like that. And now I just recently switched it up where one month it's a calendar, the next it's a coupon. They do like a coupon, like free pizza from Papa John's or um, cover three, like free cocktail or something like that. So now I'm kind of changing that up every month. You can also add some video in there, whether it's on social media, which I don't know if that really counts, not everybody sees it, or you could put the video link in your newsletter. So give them a market update and it's actual video. Um, which people seem to like that quite a bit. Uh, I personally am not doing two client events a year. Uh, I did um, latch onto one of um, like JJ and Boundless had a really great event last year. It was take um, 
professional photos with your dog, which was so cool because a lot of people that had dogs got excited to have a professional photo with their dog. It was like really cute. And I was not expecting, I was like, let me just see if I can get, and I had like 12 people come out. Uh, and then it's a great thing on social media. But the good thing about events is you have so many different touches, right? Because you call to invite them or you text to invite them, you email to invite them, you take a, you do a Facebook event invite, right? Um, then hopefully they're at the event uh, or maybe they don't show up and you call them and thank, thank them for coming or you call them, hey, so sorry you couldn't be there. Uh, and then, of course, if you did this photo thing, which they did, which is genius, um, I'm probably giving away his idea, but now you have this photo you can share with them and they're like, oh my God, this is so cool. So, and then they're sharing it on social. So like talk about an amazing event to do right there. Um, so I, I only did that one last year and I did no work. I latched on to what they were doing. Um, but uh, of course you can do something like that or just do a happy hour with a couple of people and call it a day. So um, evidence of, su of success for me, I just put that on social media, like on my realtor page um, whenever I can, whenever I think about it. I also put it on Google. I kind of have a pretty good Google presence. Uh, and then, of course, we want to try to do personal notes as often as we can. I put two per week, and that's kind of where I'm at. Like, if I get two out, I'm lucky. Um, part of that's being lazy. Part of that's being busy, right? Um, but that could be just thinking of you or thank you for getting coffee with me or happy birthday or happy anniversary. So the database I shared earlier, as you get to know people a little bit better, you know, maybe create one column that's just birthdays and just start doing the birthday program. You know, I think we get overwhelmed, like, oh, I need to put birthdays and anniversaries and hobbies and spouse names and kids. Like, oh my gosh, like just create one column that, of something that you're going to start incorporating that you think um, will make a big deal. And I love, I love birthdays. I think that's one of the best things we can do. Um, so I'll send out a birthday card, like, Hey, happy birthday. And um, depending on, you know, if I've been to Starbucks or not recently, I'll usually put a $5 Starbucks gift card in there. I'd rather buy like 50 Starbucks gift cards than pay for leads. Because when somebody gets a birthday card with a Starbucks gift card, it's way more meaningful and they're probably not going to ever stop thinking about you for doing that one thing, right? They're going to think about you when they have someone that they know needs to buy or sell a home, right? And that's the point, you know, like when I first started in the business, I was like, I don't want to call people because like I have to ask them if they want to buy a home. No, the whole point is to stay top of mind so that when they run into somebody that needs to buy or sell a home, they're going to refer you. You want to tap into their sphere of influence. That's where the success happens with the database, right? They think of you. They think of you, right? Um, JJ would always do this thing. was like, you don't go right up to the girl at the bar and say, hey, can I have your phone number? Pretty awkward, right? It's, that's kind of what that is. Like, hey, you, you need to buy a house this year? It's like, whoa, like, okay. I thought you were still a teacher or something. No, anyway, so um, that's the way we do it. And then, of course, uh, we said you add these extra columns and things like that. So that's that's what I do in a nutshell. There's a lot more that we can do. Uh, I recommend um, you come out if you haven't seen it. This is Thursday with JJ, um, the training he's going to be doing here, um, all about your sphere of influence. He calls it your data, your income. It's an amazing training. If you haven't seen it, you got to go check it out. Mark does one, too. So hopefully Mark does uh, another one here soon. Mark, are you on here? Can't tell if Mark's on here. Probably. Okay. All right. So any questions so far? Because I feel like I'm talking really quick and kind of throwing some stuff at you. Anybody? Okay. Alan, I was just going to say um, or ask a question. Do you prefer using Google for your database versus KB Core? So really good question. So um, the answer is I do both. Okay. But I'm I'm not using KV Core to automatically drip on my sphere of influence. I'm really careful about what my sphere of influence gets from me. So um, now I do have my my sphere of influence, people that know me, like me, trust me, in KV Core and in a database. But I have them in KV Core so that I can do things like send them that listing valuation, or store some notes about maybe the last conversation I had with them. Or, you know, something about like, hey, they told me they like whatever. But that could also be in my database. Um, so my database is kind of my core list of like, okay, if I want to send something out by mail, 
or communicate with them in some way or send them to an event, that's like my go-to list. So, so the answer is I do have them in both, but I don't do any automation with my uh, database in KV Core with my sphere of influence because I just, for me, I don't like to drip whatever there is in KV Core. Of course, you can customize that and you can do really well doing that. I'm just not, I'm just not doing that. So I use, like I said, for my newsletter, you can do, you can, there's a newsletter. Tony just sent me one. I've been meaning to ask him. Uh, KV Core has a newsletter feature. I don't know how to use it. I use constant contact. It's kind of been easy for me. And that's what I do. Uh, and, and, you know, like I print out my list for my database for reaching neighbors and, you know, the snail mail and that type of stuff. So does that answer your question, Josh? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. And then uh, even and then, more insight than what I was saying. Yeah. And you could do it however you want to. I'm sure there's some really good like automation for your sphere of influence that KB Core has. I just haven't seen it. Um, and then I use KV Core for like any like cold leads or internet leads and things like, and I'll just set them on, up on drips all day. I don't even care. I don't know them. Uh, I'm just trying to get them to engage with me in some way so that I can have a conversation and then move them to my database. So perfect segue here. The, your job is to get as many people as you can into that database. So meeting people, however you can, open houses, grocery stores, whatever you need to do, you meet more people. So um, the, the database is the foundation of everything. And then you have your pillars of business that you're going to get some business from, but ultimately people that are going to get back into your database. So um, you can do a whole number of things, right? Um, but if you already have a business plan set up, don't start changing it. Just, just implement it 100%. But these are other things you could be doing. And, and just to make it easy, I'll tell you what I did when I started. Uh, I didn't have much of a sphere of influence, but I, I put it together and I started the process I've already shared with you. And because I did that, I'm now seeing the fruits of that labor now, luckily, um, but I didn't have that many people to put in. So I did a lot of open houses. I did one pretty much every weekend in 2016 and 2017, and literally with the exception of like maybe five or six weekends. I mean, I really, 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 um, you know, threw myself into it and I wanted to master it. So like I watched all the YouTubes about open houses and different ways to do things. Um, and we could do a training about open houses, um, but there's so many resources just through EXP and through the training that they provide and the training we're doing locally, like live, um, you know, you can, you can learn that way, but um, open houses is about meeting people. And um, this is something that JJ and I talk about too, is uh, your goal should be to uh, have a good conversation. So you develop a relationship and add someone new into your database. Of course, every now and then you get lucky You'll meet somebody, they're a hot buyer, they're pretty much ready to go, you can get them qualified, you can pick up buyers, I've done it many times. Um, but if you always have this expectation that like, hey, I should get a buyer every time I do an open house, obviously it's going to be discouraging. Okay, so if you're thinking about building this database, communicating with it the right way, which by the way, I think that's the biggest mistake I see people make, is they just don't start a database one, and then they don't communicate with the database at all. Okay, there's, there's, there's too many of us that just we're hoping that we just run into somebody at an open house or something and they're ready to go. And that does happen sometimes, but not as much as you would think. So it's all about your database, right? So open house is a way to build that. Um, door knocking, I really have never done. These are pillars of business, right? Networking, um, huge. I mean, if you can meet other business professionals that you can add to your database, that's big because they want referrals too. So um, get to know them, add them to your database. Um, by doing video and, and content and posting to social media, you're staying top of mind with people. And you may have people reach out to you. Um, you can call expired leads for sale by owners. There's whole systems to doing that. And by the way, for any of these, if you decide to make one of these your pillars of business, you need to start mastering that particular pillar and not get off that pillar for at least six months. You need six months of daily, weekly commitment to building that to see if it's even something that's going to work for you. So this is this is not a instant results type business. This is long term investments in ourselves. Um, so you know it's it, it's should we definitely need to get out of our comfort zone for sure. But pick something that you think you would like doing. It still should be uncomfortable, right? Um, so I recommend you pick at least two of these. 
and you just hone that craft, you build and master that craft and you just work it until it's giving you some actual business because right, you're still building your database and you should be getting referrals from that um, if you're communicating with them correctly. So this is to supplement that, to move the process faster, right? Um, but your database is the lifeblood of your business. And if you talk to any, any successful agent that's still successful today, um, I guarantee they have a strong database. I could tell you that JJ and Bobby, yes. Val, yes, Val's on the call. Mark, Tony, um, uh, who else? Like Lisa Guzman, right? Um, they all have a strong database, I guarantee it. So that's where most of their business is coming from. So it's all about building that. Um, of course, you can call neighborhoods. There's a great um, tool called Mojo, where it's a, it's a CRM system, a dialer, and a lead system. So you can like plug in expired leads, for sale by owner leads, neighborhood leads, um, and there's just a huge abundance of people you can call, actually for pretty cheap. Uh, so you could do that. And then internet leads, there's things like making it rain and, and other things um, you could do. So I recommend work on your database, make sure you have a system for doing it, set up that system and stick to it every single week, every single month. I actually have like a whole 12 month calendar um, that I could share with anyone who wants it. And then we have these alternate lead sources, um, KV Core. If you learn how to use KV Core really well, you can post for free and you can get organic leads without having to pay. Um, of course, that's going to take a lot of time. You need to make sure you take the trainings both from KV Core because there's trainings inside it. Um, if you're in San Antonio, um, Andrew uh, Maureen does the live trainings. And then EXP offers be beginner, in intermediate, and advanced trainings in the virtual office. So uh, we don't really have an excuse. Like we, the trainings are there for us to learn it. Um, and then you can, if you go into the marketplace in KV Core, they have systems that can run Google leads for you, Facebook ads, all types of things. The Google leads thing is called making it rain. Uh, and that could be a really good thing for you. Um, some people are apprehensive to do internet leads. I think if you're, if you are honestly building your database and, and hitting two pillars of business, um, then I think you can do internet leads as long as you're willing to call them and follow up with them. But you can't expect a lot of, of stuff to come from these internet leads. It just takes time. Um, internet leads are notoriously bad. And I would just, I'll just tell you like one out of a hundred will end up working with you and it may take six months. So that's a long game. It's kind of a blood sport, but it's there to supplement. And Hey, you never know when, you know, you put these leads in there and you set up the automation with KV core, somebody might start responding and hey, you, you know, it could work out for you. So um, I'm, I'm, you know, okay investing money in leads if I don't have other things going. That's different than some others. Um, you can do Facebook ads through KV Core as well. There's Opsity, the brokerage offers that. You just need to talk to them. Um, you can work renters. One of my regrets when I first started in the business is I was just like, no, nope, not going to work renters. No, no, not going to. And had I just done that instead of like, I did my first six months, I closed one deal, one deal in six months. What if I had just worked like a, like one or two renters a month and now I had 10, they're past clients, right? 10 past renters in my database. Uh, Cause hindsight's 2020, right? Like now those 10 people could be 10 extra past clients in my database that either one ended up buying a home a year later or two years later. So we helped them do it, helped them through the process or two, they could have referred me business. So um, we don't want to shy away from renters. I mean, if you got nothing else going on, you know, do your, get your, you know, get your real work done there in the morning and, uh, and then go work renters in the afternoon. Right. So yeah. Val, what's up? Yeah. I just wanted to chime in about renters because I still sometimes do renters and I'm pretty busy in my business, but I also, it's hard for me to say no to people. Um, I used to do a lot more rental rentals when I first started. I still do some uh, now, but it is actually pretty lucrative, even though you don't get uh, a ton of cash when you close on them. Now I've got renters that are absolutely buying um, now they refer um, buyers and sellers to me. Wow. So I, especially when I was starting, but even now I just don't say no. Like if you're slow on business, take the business because you don't know where it's going to take you. Wow. I love that. See, now I regret it even more, Val. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it is a source of business and um, you know, it, it is, if you think about it too, it's like one of the most rewarding things you could do because a lot of renters just, 
it's not so much like some of them, obviously they, they can't buy a home right away. Um, but the steps to becoming a homeowner are not as difficult as some people think. And so, you know, a lot of us have been past educators. Now we have this opportunity to help really help people and you're helping them. It's not just about the commission. You're helping them not pay someone else's mortgage for the rest of their life. They're going to build their equity in their house. They're going to build that asset for their family. Like it's, you're doing, we're doing a really great thing by educating them, you know, getting them with someone that can help them with credit repair if they need it, you know, educating them on the different types of like loans they can do, how much they might need for a down payment and closing costs. Um, and it's actually better. Like now, the more and more I think about it, it's like, I'd rather have a renter that's renting that's preparing to buy a home than someone's like, Hey, I don't want to buy a house. And they've done nothing to prepare. Right. So, um, yeah, I love it. So I'm going to keep going here. Hey, I saw that Shane's on here. So Shane, if you want to jump in, man, I'd love to hear anything you want to say. I appreciate you being on. Yeah, thanks. Uh, right now I'm good. So, um, I'm just sharing this real quick. We're not going to go into this, but you know, I have a script that I've been using since like my first year in real estate um, that I used to use for internet leads. What I like about the script is not so much reading it word for word, which I think in the beginning would not be such a bad thing to read word for word. But what I love about this is the, the structure of a call or a conversation with a buyer. Um, the truth is if you're building rapport with, with the potential prospect for the first time, a lot of these questions will be answered. But for me, I'm always going in this order. Sometimes you'll hear people call it like LP mama. But basically, I want to know like, hey, what? And I start, we start with location because we're getting them to think about what they want, not just like, hey, are you qualified? Um, so, you know, basically, I'm not going to go through this, but we want to kind of structure the conversation where we're thinking about where they want to buy, what price range they might want to buy in, um, what's their motivation? Like, do they need something this month or a year from now? Uh, and then trying to gauge if they have an agent or not, which is sometimes pretty obvious, right? And then seeing if they've gotten pre-qualified. And then if, if they do have a pretty, you know, short-term time frame, setting them up on some sort of search. And I would for sure 100% um, any type of prospect, put them in KV Core, and I would set them up on search alerts pretty much right away. I mean, ask permission, um, but the best thing we could do is set them up on search alerts in KV Core because we want them to use our website for, for real estate. If they have a question about real estate, we don't want them to use Zillow. I mean, they're probably still going to, right? But at least they're, you're showing up in their inbox, right? So, so like a brand new lead, you put them in your database, hopefully, and you're sending them a newsletter and they're getting search alerts. Like anything they think of now real estate is hopefully going to be through you. Uh, and then, of course, you want to figure out how you want to set up an appointment, depending on what their time frame is. And an appointment could be uh, a Zoom consultation, which I love doing these days, uh, is a buyer consultation over Zoom. It's just, I found that people are open to that. They actually enjoy it. it it's easy, you know, like husband and wife, when one's working from home, <clears throat> one's working, you know, at where, whatever company, everybody can get on a Zoom during the day, right? Um, kids aren't around. So um, I think that works really well. Or sometimes the appointment is just like, hey, let's just start going to see homes. You know, if you can get somebody qualified, if you're new, by the way, when you get somebody qualified, it's the best feeling ever. Because guess what? They're pretty much going to be working with you. So you want to have a really good uh, loan officer partner, right? And we have Greg on today. If you want to talk with Greg, he's great. Greg's an agent and a loan officer, and he's with EXP. Awesome. Okay, so um, really quick, I, I just kept this in from last time. Like if you get a new lead, you know, that's kind of cold or warm or whatever, um, you want to put them in KV Core, put them on a drip. There's uh, a buyer default drip on KV Core that's just going to stay in touch with them. Um, if you think it's a really sensitive, closer contact, like somebody that may have been referred to you, then we don't want to drip on them. We just want to put them on our hot list, which should be written down so we remember to follow up with them, right? And the hot list should be anybody that's looking to buy or sell. For me, it's within the next year. And so I'm careful on how I communicate with them, but I have a hot list in front of me, it's like right here, um, so I don't let them slip through the cracks. But I don't want to drip on those people because I don't want to like mess with that. So, um, so you can ass assign a drip if it makes sense to use your best judgment on that. I put them on the newsletter. Now they're getting that every two weeks, market update, videos, social links, website links. Um, if if it's a close contact, again, I'm going to um, add them to my database, of course. 
So they go into my system, which we discussed that one slide, all the things we do for that database. I want to send a thank you note if we had a really good conversation. Um, per, I prefer a, a Starbucks gift card. I just like that little touch. Five bucks could be worth an $8,000 commission. So, hey, let's do it. Uh, and they go into your system and, and they, they stay in your system forever. Okay. Um, so again, keep that hot list so things don't slip through the cracks. So um, I'm skipping that for now. So um, really quick, uh, this kind of goes to some of the stuff we were talking about in the beginning. You, you definitely want to somehow time block your working hours, your money-making time. I like to do it like every day from nine to 11. That's when I'm contacting people. I don't let repair amendments get in my way. I don't let agents, you know, hey, I got to talk to you right now. Hey, I'll be free at 1130. Let's talk then. Hey, sounds good. Okay. Um, you know, other business partners in the industry, nine to 11 is the time for me where I'm getting my contacts done. And for me right now, it's five great conversations. And I should, I should have listened to Shane in the beginning of 2022 when he asked me to commit to it. And it took me like six months to just figure out that's what I needed to be doing anyway. Um, and that's the best thing you can be doing, by the way. Uh, if, if there's one nugget you're going to take away from today's training, it should be your job is to have five great conversations every day. And if you talk with the most successful realtors in the business, they're always on the phone. They're always out meeting someone in appointments. They're having conversations. That's just, that's how we do it. It's relationship based. It's all about relationships. So best thing you can do is have five great conversations a day. Um, JJ did 20. Um, I think Shane, you probably do 10 with, with agents, right? Everybody's got something going. Yeah, that's my goal, I, yeah. Yeah, that's inspiring. Cause like I, every time I've met with Shane he has his database written with him everywhere he goes. This is the power of the database, everybody. So um, that, that's what we need to do. So carve out that time. The one thing is all about time blocking uh, and it will get you to really understand the, uh, the strength in, in doing that. Um, and so, you know, uh, the other thing too is when you put something in your calendar, which we should all have a weekly calendar. I like to use the Mac calendar. I think it's really good. When you put those appointments in there, like prospecting or power hour or whatever you call it, never cancel it. Because when you, when you just kind of quit on a prior commitment you made to yourself, you're going to lose your confidence. It's like subconscious. It's a subconscious thing. So whatever you set up, whatever promise you told yourself, you need to stick to, and it builds confidence. And when you start doing five conversations a day and you have 25 great conversations in a week and then 100 great conversations in a month, you're going to feel really confident because one, you know, like, hey, I'm actually doing the right thing. Like, I don't have to look for the next best thing. I'm doing the best thing I can. And by the way, it's, this is not sexy, by the way. I always say, like, the real money making happens, like, at home, by yourself. No one's around. There's no validation. There's no recognition. It's just, like, checking out, okay, I crossed that out. I did that. Um, and that's, that's where the money is made, okay? So um, just to kind of wrap up. Uh, invest in yourself. Um, these are kind of the books that I recommend for anybody that's getting into like the business for the first time or personal development. I like to revisit these because I, I read them differently. Things hit me differently. One thing is about time blocking. The slight edge is about productivity. Um, and, you know, like the fact that like the small daily disciplines add up to big results, which is a big thing for me. Um, and, uh, and then ninja selling is going to be exactly how you communicate with your database word for word. So I would, I think two things I would take away from this is five conversations a day and read Ninja Selling cover to cover. That's all you really need to know to make some really, really good money in real estate. Um, I've also, um, if you've I've noticed, created a group called the Alliance Group. I'm just wanting everybody to help everybody. That's my goal. I want everybody to be successful, um, no matter what organization they're in, doesn't matter to me, what company. Um, I want them to be successful. And so what I started doing is like, I've read like so many personal development books. It's like kind of like weird and geeky. And I think, but I've highlighted them all too. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start compiling these. So what I've started to do is I'm summarize these books and I'm sharing them in the group. And so I sent a few to people uh, directly, but if you want that, check it out. But, uh, you know, make sure you're kind of sticking in this group here. You need to download this app, the workplace app for your phone and the workplace chat app. 
Otherwise, you're like you're disconnected from everything that's going on with the company. Okay, um, I can DM Alan Stewart or Glenn Sanford. Like, how amazing is that? You need to have this on your computer, but more importantly, on your phone because we're all on our phones. Workplace app, workplace chat app, just like Facebook app, Facebook app, Messenger app, right? You need to have this. Otherwise, you're you're pretty disconnected. Uh, and then um, make sure that you're looking at the training calendar. I can't see if I can get to it here. There we go. Man, I hate when it does that. Um, so if you go to its expcloud.com slash calendar, these are all the trainings. Here are all the trainings that EXP is providing today, just today. And if you can go to one that says icon, then you know that you're going to a training from someone that's busy in the business selling at least 30 to 40 deals a year on average every single year. Uh, so you're, you're, you're hearing from the best of the best that are successful right now. Like uh, I interviewed a couple of Tom Ferry coaches a few years ago and like three of them hadn't done business for like eight years. Like, what, okay, what do you know as a coach about the market right now? Probably not much, right? So you can go to these trainings taught by people that are the best in the business, not just from San Antonio or Texas, from all over the world. Uh, and, and so I would go to at least one of those uh, a week um, to schedule that in. Um, so it makes sure you're using, using workplace and things like that. So just a couple things to, um, to show you. There's this uh, training here on Thursday. Um, I would definitely go see if you haven't gone to JG's database training. EXPCon is happening October 2nd. Uh, Shane, do you have anything coming up? Any, anything? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting my accountability groups probably a, uh, in a week and a half. Awesome. So, well, two weeks from Tuesday today. So I would I would really recommend that. Um, I know like we've got some brand new people on here. Um, Carol's on here. Um, Simone. Um, yeah. So so just to let you know, like um, Shane and I met. Uh, God, it was like 2016 when I started in the business. I met, met you through Isaac, Shane, and um, we would meet like every, at least every two weeks for a while. Um, and he helped me with my mindset quite a bit because, um, you know, like we're up and down. Um, and mm. so uh, just a, a huge motivational um, person for me in my life and my business. And um, so if you haven't met him or worked with him, I recommend doing that. Uh, I did both. We did one-on-one -on -one accountability at gyms for like years. And then also he did this group, the group stuff uh, is actually really good because um, you're kind of hearing what other people are doing, um, Shane and everybody that's in the group to achieve success. So it's really, really good stuff. I really highly recommend uh, doing that. Yeah. So um, if you hey, have some time, yeah. Or uh, whatever they can contact me. Um, yeah. Whoever wants, it's going to be, I might do two. So there'll be plenty of room for whoever wants to get in. Yeah. Uh, anybody who wants his info, just text me. I'll, I'll shoot you Shane's info. Um, but uh, we have some time here. Um, it's not really Q&A, but just like a discussion. Uh, anything that anybody wants to add um, or anything we can help with. There's a lot of really great, successful people on here, may, way more successful than I, um, that have a lot of experience. So um, what are you struggling with? Or, you know, what's something, does anybody want to share anything? Okay, that means everybody's everybody is <laughs> killing it. <laughs> yeah. hey, on you know, you mentioned ninja selling. You know, I don't know if I gave you that book or not, but um, the first day of the Maybe. group, I I give that I'll give that book to people anybody that wants it. So I'm sitting here. I have probably 25 copies on my shelf, and I also have uh, 18 copies of Miracle Morning. So you know, I'm big on big on the, giving those books out. And so if you come the first day and you want that, I'll give it to you. And if you don't ever come back, that's okay. You know, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. Or if you just want to come by my office, I can give it to you too. There you go. I yeah. think for me, the struggle is uh, I'm a pretty high energy person and I like to be busy and I've got some listings that are sitting and some buyers that are kind of poking around. I want to be moving um, but I think there's just other things that I can do other than working with clients right now, just because of the market. Um, so right now I'm focusing on social media and videos and getting my brand out there. So 
I was thinking today, uh, earlier today when we were at coffee, I was like, these moments where I actually have time to build the business are pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, I love being busy because that makes money, but these, you know, so-called slumps are also opportunities to kind of push forward. So if you just take one thing, like Alan said, from these conversations and just start doing, asking questions, um, any of us are here to help. Uh, I think you'll see that it'll grow your business and you'll get really busy pretty quick, but you just got to start somewhere and move forward. Yeah, I 100% with that Val so so and I think most people want to feel like they're busy right but being productive is the way to be right and so that means sitting down at your computer or your phone or sitting somewhere for 30 minutes to an hour a day go through your as Alan said the um, your contact list which is probably in your phone but go through it and organize it you're going to get farther with that than you do being out doing a bunch of stuff that is just busy work if you just concentrate on getting organized with your database, that's going to be way worth your time more than anything else. Yeah, that, that's something I forget too, is, is if you haven't built your database or you haven't seen it in a while, if you go back to it and you open it and you're, you're consciously trying to add people to it, you, it's naturally going to spur these thoughts like, oh my gosh, I forgot about so-and-so that I need to reach out to. It just happens. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing too that I thought of uh, Val um, I did this. I want to share this real quick. Anybody that has listings or will have listings or list, listings that are sitting on the market. Um, I did, what is it called? Um, the, the Google version of, of, uh, of zoom. It's like Google, Oh, Google meet. So, uh, Val's not listening, but she'll hear it later. So I, I get on Google meet and cause my, my seller has a listing. It was like not selling, right? We thought we were going to get more showing stuff like that. So I start, I do this all on my own, right? I open Google Meet, I share my screen so you see me, and then I do a live CMA of her property. I show her, here are all the days on market for all the properties that are on the market right now. Here are the pendings. Here's what sold over the last you know, two months. <laughs> and then I open it up. Here are the upgrades on the one down the street. You know, and this is the one you did, Carol, um, the Lion King. And, um, and, and then I said, I made this case. I showed them all the math. And I said, you know, this is where we've got to go. Otherwise we're going to be chasing the market and you're going to continue paying holding costs and you're going to, you're going to end up losing a lot more money. This is what we need to do right now. And I just sent it and I was like, oh, I'll call her, you know, like later or tomorrow. Um, so I sent her that through email, right? It was like seven minute live CMA update, um, exactly what's going on. And she texts me like 20 minutes later. She's like, what do we need to drop it to? She didn't even be like, I want to drop it to, she's like, what do we need to drop it to? So all of a sudden she, now she's completely educated on what's going on in the market. She's, she saw all the math. I mean, it's, it's all very obvious. And then she's going, okay, this person's obviously an expert, right? So now they just feel foolish without adjusting to where they need to adjust if, if they have that urgency. So we dropped it like 15,000 and then right away, like the next day we had showing, 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 showing. And then we had three, two, three offers, two retracted for whatever reason, but we accepted one offer. So um, that was really powerful for me. And, and, and to be honest, I stole that because my parents have their home on the market. If you guys got to go, it's cool. Just wanted to share this last thing. My parents put their home on the market in New Jersey. Um, they're moving to South Carolina. And, uh, and so I referred the deal out to an EXP agent in New Jersey. And he sent me this live CMA update where he's sharing the screen and doing the video. So this is how proactive he is. Like he's sending that to me as a referring agent. He sent that to my parents and my parents aren't even hard to convince. Like you could just be like, please. Be, okay. But he did this whole thing and sent it to me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, why am I not doing it? And so rip off and duplicate. Right. It was probably the best thing I could have done. Now every situation is different. Like Val, I'm sure, you know, you've had these conversations repeatedly um, but a lot of people are not, they're too afraid to have these conversations with their sellers and that's not good. So we need to make sure that upfront, we're really educating them on what they need to list it at. And then every week that we're, we're on the phone with them, um, especially now, cause you know, they could really get into trouble. Like if it just gets stale and things like that. So anybody else got something before we wrap up? 
Cool. Um, I'm going to share uh, Shane's info with everybody that's on here. Uh, let me just do a quick little screenshot so I remember. Hold on. Maybe not. Okay. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is awesome. We'll see you all soon. Everybody take care. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Alan. Thanks,